Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel. Now, this is answering a question that I get a lot after I've done a live or a video using my gel plate. And that's what do I do with the gel plate prints afterwards? Because I tend to do them on copy paper just to save paper because they don't always go to plan. They don't always go perfectly. Some of them come out absolutely beautifully as you can see here. And how do I then transfer them onto a paper craft project? So I'm going to show you today um, a number of cards that I can quickly put together using my prints. If you've never tried gel printing before but you're interested, I will link down below the gel plate, the brayer, everything that I use. The Most of the prints that I'm using today have actually been done with uh, Ranger Distress inks, the Tim Holtz Distress inks or oxides, but I also have videos covering uh, how to use the gel plate with acrylic paints, especially for beginners. So if you pop up to the playlist at the top here, that's all my gel plate printing videos for you to browse through first of all. Now the first thing I'm going to do when I'm looking at my gel print prints is work out which ones are going to be full on backgrounds, which ones I really don't want to chop into and which ones are just a little bit of texture like this that I'm quite happy to die cut, uh, punch, tear and just basically break into. So you can see here I've got some lovely full backgrounds. This one was a magazine transfer there, this one as well, but this one's not as clear. So this has got some beautiful detail in it. So this one would be one I'd chop into. That would make a gorgeous background. Again, as with that, this one is probably going to be pieces. Uh, this one's actually two parts. So I've got the darker part, the first impression and the second impression. So I kind of just go along like this and I split them into uh, different sections. So for my first card, I'm actually taking four prints here that I made whilst testing out the same technique. Some of these were the first impression, some of these were the second impression, but I kind of used the same colour range. So you can see I've got a lovely duck egg blue and a mustard sort of colour throughout. So I thought these would be really nice to layer together. So my favourite of all of them is this one. So this is going to be my full background. The other three I'm going to cut into. Now, because this is copy paper, I can die cut through all three at once. And I'm going to do a little bit of a patchwork kind of effect using some hexagon dies. So these are just hexagon dies from uh, Craft Sash. These are the Creative Craft Products range. And I'm just going to place a couple of different sizes on the papers there. So three different sizes there, and I'm going to die cut these all together. This should then give me, because I've got three sheets here, should give me nine different hexagon shapes. Now once you've cut those three out, you are actually left with three fantastic little apertures, all the same size. So you could play around with also placing these in shapes like so. And I'm actually going to create a card to show you at the end uh, when these are laid out. So don't waste your scraps either. Now, depending on the thickness of the paper that you've used for your gel plate printing, you may want to back this onto cardstock. Now, I tend to do this quite a lot. The only exception to this is when I decide to actually stitch my papers onto my card because then I'm not going to have any edges that are going to raise up. But if I want to back them onto cardstock and then use something like foam tape, I'm going to just use a wet glue and spread that all over the surface of the paper. As long as you've got a decent copy paper, that shouldn't affect the print on the other side. So allow that to dry and then I'm going to snip this to size. So I'm just going to measure the square that I want on here, cut this out once it's dry and then I have a really sturdy backing card. I've also gone ahead and I've die cut another nine uh, hexagons just from solid white cardstock, a nice strong cardstock. And these are to adhere my paper pieces to. So you don't have to do this again, but if you want to raise things up on foam, for example, and you don't want them to be uh, flopping about, then this is a really good way of making them nice and sturdy. I also like to ink around the very edges of everything in a colour that coordinates with my print colours. Uh, this just helps to finish those edges off. So I've just adhered that onto my card with some foam. So I've got some dimension because of course we've got lots of texture there, but it's perfectly flat being a gel print. And then I'm going to take my um, tiles here, my hexagons that I cut and just work out how I'm going to arrange these. So I'm um, just going to be quite random with them. I don't want too many, I just want a couple. And you never know, we might be able to make something else with what's left. So. I think we'll put this one up here and then one of these 
down here. We might just over, we might just overlap a couple, we'll see. So I'm going to just position those for now. I'm not going to glue those down, but you can see how the patterns and the colors, they just work perfectly with each other. So let's just replace that with that. I'm uh, much happier with that. There we go. Okay, now what I tend to do as well is also choose some embellishments that are going to work well with these colors too. And these are usually just things that I've got at home. The idea is with my gel plate prints, that I'm making quick and easy cards. So what I've got here is um, some die cuts that have come from my floral folk art collection. This is one of the butterflies. I'm going to take that same brown and I'm just going to ink some of these just so that they look similar to everything else. Now the die cuts have been cut using, again, kind of similar uh, colors, not perfect, but not too far off. So. Uh, I might actually forfeit, I might actually leave the blue. I'm not sure that quite goes. After adhering my hexagons there with some foam tape as well, so we've got the dimension. I'm just going to glue my butterfly on as well. Now that's layered up and looking uh, similar in color. So just a little bit of ink, usually the inks that coordinate the ones perhaps you used um, for your actual gel prints, they would work just to keep everything tied in. I'm going to add to this um, a couple of bits of foliage as well. Again, these are just little off cuts from die cuts that I've made in the past. Uh, I am going to just snip these. I think I must have taken stems off beforehand. So I'm just going to snip into them, give them a little bit of inking. So just reusing lots of the scraps that I have laying around in my craft room. And lastly, just to finish this off, I'm going to just take a small sentiment from my uh, Sentiments for All paper pack. Now this is coming back into stock in the middle of July, so hopefully not too much longer now. So I'm just going to cut the word thanks. I'm going to use black. This is a nice contrast. It will stand out against the lovely muted colours of the rest of the card. I always think the sentiment should be bold and stand out anyway. Lastly, a couple of little black gems and pearls just to finish off and to kind of echo the black that's in the sentiment. So using the scraps from the hexagons, all I did was I adhered uh, four of them onto a card base with foam pads and dotted some uh, liquid drops around in the black that matched the sentiment again, similar to the way I did with the gems in the first card. And then I also took the apertures, the offcuts or the waste, from those gel prints where I cut the hexagons from, I kind of layered them up together, um, gluing them together, but staggering them slightly. So you get this cool chevron shaped shadow showing through each of the hexagons. I then um, adhered, or I cut that piece down and then I adhered it onto a lovely green card base that would kind of match the colors going on within the rest of the cards. And then again, just popped a simple sentiment over the top and some droplets. So I've now got three beautiful cards that kind of match. So here's my three quick cards. This one being my first one, the main one, uh, and these two being just from the scraps of this because of course we like to use everything as paper crafters. If you like this video, please do give me a thumbs up and a subscribe. I'm going to have lots more of these gel plate print card making videos coming up very, very soon. So I'd love you to join me on those. Uh, everything I used to create the gel prints in the beginning and anything else I've used to create these cards is all linked down below. So take a look at those and I'll see you all again here very soon. Take care.